This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church, 117 East Church Street, where the great pastor is Pastor Marlon Jones. We want to welcome you to this virtual setting. We thank all of you for joining and tuning in to our Facebook Live this morning. We hope that you are enjoying the service this far. We hope that you have enjoyed the good singing. And we pray that you will enjoy the good preaching. Wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, just know St. Luke is grateful to have you this morning. And we are going to worship God. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I am Pastor Marlon, and I have the blessed privilege and honor of serving right here at St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church in the wonderful city of Waco. On behalf of the officers, leaders, and members here at St. Luke, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much uh, to Brother Jamal for the wonderful welcome. Thank you to the praise team for leading us higher in worship. God has been good. I do declare this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Help me this morning. Help me, St. Luke. Help me. It's not too late to get your virtual evangelism on. We want as many people a part of this worship experience as we can. I want you to invite somebody to worship with us and let them know it's about to go down at St. Luke. Look, I don't know what you've been going through. Help me, Holy Ghost. I don't know what you had to face this week. I don't know what trials knocked you upside the head. I don't know if you want to throw in the towel or not. But I'm telling you today that there is a word from the Lord that will set you free. Amen. It's not preaching time yet, but I do want you to know that God has given me a word. And that word is a word of deliverance. The word that God has given me is a word of healing. It is a word that will help you navigate the vicissitudes of life. Amen. Somebody. And I don't want you to be stingy with the word. Don't be a spiritual glutton where you just feast on the word for yourself. But invite somebody to share with you. Come on and reach out to a family member. Reach out to a friend, a co-worker, someone in your network and let them know it's about to go down at St. Luke. I do want to announce and I, I am I'm excited to announce that on August 22nd. Amen. On August 22nd. 
St. Luke will, will once again open the doors for in-person worship. Amen. I stutter just a little bit, and I want to make sure I say that clearly. On August 22nd, amen, on August 22nd, St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church, 117 East Church Street in Waco, Texas, will open its doors again for in-person worship. You ought to shout hallelujah. You ought to shout thank you, Jesus. Amen. And as we prepare to come back into our sanctuary, as I've said before, we don't simply want to come and stand on holy ground, but we want to come and stand on some new carpet. Amen. And I want to say thank you to all those who have already given, all those who have already shown their support above their tithes and offering for us to make sure that we have new carpet when we come back into the sanctuary on August 22nd. But we are asking that seven people, that's it, just seven people, sow a seed into this ministry of $500 to help us uh, make sure that by August 22nd, the carpet is in place. We're asking for 10 people, just 10 people, to sow a seed of $200, and we're asking everybody to sow a seed of $100, anybody who can. And we thank you for your support. As we walk into the sanctuary, not standing just on holy ground, but standing on new carpet. I want people to come in here and say, oh, pastor, that show is nice. Oh, pastor, look at this car. We, we've been needing this for some years, but look what the Lord has done. You know, many years ago, the Lord revealed to me that your church is a reflection of your giving. Amen, somebody. Your church is a reflection of your giving. When you are a generous giver, it is reflected in your church. And I just want to say thank you once again to, to all the members of St. Luke, to all the those who have supported our ministry uh, throughout this pandemic, because we can testify that we're still standing. And we can testify that we're still standing because of your generosity, because of your faithfulness in giving. At St. Luke, we practice the give, save, live principle. What does that mean? It means that we give our first 10% to God because we understand that God is truly the source of all of our provision. We give our first 10% to God. We save 10% for ourselves because that's good stewardship. And then we live off the rest. That is the give, save, live principle. And in 2021, we are engaged in the give, save, live challenge. And what we have done is we have made personal commitments, a commitment between you and God to increase your giving on a monthly basis. How, however much you have done that, that is between you and God. But then we've also made the commitment within our personal finances to save a minimum of twenty five hundred dollars. That is the floor. That is not the ceiling. You can save more. But we are taking the baby steps. We are taking the necessary steps to becoming financially free. The ways that you can give are already on the screen. And we once again, thank you for your generosity because you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. A church, it, it is with the heavy heart that I share with you uh, the homegoing arrangements for the immediate past Episcopal supervisor of the 10th Episcopal District, Dr. Stan McKenzie. The announcement went out that Dr. McKenzie went home to be with the Lord. And I do want to share with you the homegoing arrangements. Uh, they will take place Saturday, July 31st at the Richard Allen Chapel. Uh, they will, uh, there will be a viewing uh, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And at 12 p.m. there will be the celebration of life. Uh, once again, that is Saturday, Saturday, July 31st at uh, the Richard Allen Chapel on the campus of Paul Quinn College. The celebration of life will begin at 12 p.m. The viewing will be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. There will also be a homegoing home celebration on Saturday, August 7th at Bethel AME Church in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, please keep Bishop of Ashton Murphy McKenzie lifted prayers. Please keep the McKenzie family lifted in your prayers. Uh, during this time of mourning and this time of celebration. Uh, let us now prepare our hearts and minds to go higher in the Lord. 
as our praise team comes, I ask you to posture yourself in a position to receive everything that God has for you. Amen. out of the mouth of God. And as we come now to the preaching moment, I ask that you would bow before the Lord, that you would bow before our King, that you would humble yourself as we ask God to give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, that we might put away the distractions that would hinder us from getting everything that God has in store for us in this hour. If you would, bow your head, close your eyes as we look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, there is none like you. God, we could search the whole world over and we would not find one as loving, one as kind, one as passionate, one as forgiving as you. As we come now to the preaching moment, we don't come full of pride. 
but we humble ourselves. And we ask you, God, to give us an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God, there is a word from you. And I ask you to speak through me. But as the elders of the church would say, hide me behind the cross, less of me and more of you. I don't stand as a motivational speaker. I stand as a preacher of the gospel. Motivational preaching makes you feel good. The gospel changes your life for time and for eternity. God, change our lives. My prayer is always simple. Allow me to believe and to believe what I preach. Because God, if I don't believe this, then I should not preach it. And I pray for your people that they are not only hearers of your word. I pray, God, they would be doers of your holy word. For truly thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. People of God said, amen. Amen. This morning, I want you to go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, and I just want to lift for your hearing one verse this morning. It's not a long verse, but it is filled with substance. It's filled with wisdom, and it is the wisdom that will guide us this morning. Genesis chapter 2, and I'm reading for your hearing just one verse. Verse 18. The word of the Lord declares, The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Because of the brevity of the text, I think that it's okay if I read it one more time. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. For the time that that I have to share with you this morning, I'd like to focus our attention on the thought and on the thing. I need you. Amen. If 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 you are not by yourself right now, uh, but you have someone else close to you, why don't you help me this morning? Look that person in the eye. And with the most sincerest voice that you have, I just let them know I need you. Let, let them know that, that I, I need you. Amen. I, I want to share uh, from that, that thought, that theme this morning, I need you. One of the most memorable sermons to be honest with you I don't even remember if it was a sermon uh, or if it was a workshop Uh, but it took place as I was growing up attending an event for the YPD I don't remember the preacher's name Uh, he he may not have even been clergy he could have been a lay but it was on a YPD trip speaker stood up and said words that have forever been etched in my mind. He said, from the womb to the tomb, from the cradle to the grave, from the time you check in to the time you check out, life is hard, it's a struggle. For some reason, those words resonated with me and I have never forgotten those words from the womb to the tomb, from the cradle to the grave, from the time you check in to the time you check out. Life is hard, it's a struggle. From the womb to the tomb, cradle to the grave, from the time you check in to the time you check out, life is hard, life is a struggle. One of the things that makes life so difficult, one of the things that makes life so challenging are the uncertainties of life. 
one of the things that just makes life difficult is the reality that there are some things that we just can't control. Some things that are beyond our scope and beyond our reach and those things, they leave us uncertain. And when it comes to uncertainty, uncertainty is one of the most uncomfortable feelings that you can experience. Uh, uncertainty, it, it has a way of tormenting you. When, when you don't know what the outcome will be, when you don't know what the future will hold, when you don't know what's going to happen from day to day, not knowing is something that disrupts your life. It's something that disturbs you. It's something that robs you of your peace. For almost a year and a half, uncertainty has gripped our world. When it seems like we take a couple of steps forward and we are overcoming COVID-19, we get smacked in the face with the Delta variant. When it seems that we are making strides forward, it seems like mandates for masks get lifted. When, when the blessed day came and vaccinations were released, at first there was a push to get vaccinated and people within African American communities were getting looked over, but then vaccinations came out and they came out plentiful and now people aren't even getting vaccinated. Less than half of our country has received the COVID-19 vaccination and it leaves us uncertain. Uncertainty is real and it manifests in, in many and varying ways. And I've been experiencing some uncertainty for about the past month or so. For about the past month, I've been wrestling with uncertainty and I'm going to share with you a story that I got permission uh, to share. As a preacher, whenever you're sharing someone else's story or you're sharing your story and it's connected to somebody else, uh, before you do that, you should always ask permission. And, and I did so. But about a month or so ago, I remember uh, leaving the church. And as I was leaving the church, my phone rang. And on the other end... It was my mother. Now, what you have to understand about my mother is that she is, without a doubt, the strongest person that I know. I'm not talking about the weights that you lift, but I'm talking about the weights that someone is able to carry and keep pushing on through life. And my, my mother, she, she is, without a doubt, the strongest person that I know. She's not given to a great deal of emotions, she is a strong woman. In fact, I remember as a teenager, my mother had a surgery and, and after the surgery, she came home and she was resting in the bed. But as she was resting, uh, some, of, some of the stitches began to pull and the stitches began to tear and, 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 and we had to go back to the hospital. And so my sister and I, we helped her out of the bed because when, when she began to reach up, it, it would pull on those stitches and, and it would make things worse. And so we helped her into the car. And when we got into the car, I got behind the wheel and I was driving. And as I was driving, I was just as nervous as could be. I was so nervous that I was obeying all the traffic laws. And I remember coming to a red light. Now, it, it, was, it was pretty late at night. There were no other cars out, but I came to that red light and I was holding on to that steering wheel just as tight as I could. And, and as I was waiting for the light to turn green, my mother just looked at me. She kind of leaned over and she said, you know what? I think it's okay if you, if you run this light. She, she's a strong woman. And she could, she could coach me even when she was experiencing pain. And that's why when my phone rang and she was on the other end and, 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 and I could hear that she was crying, I could hear that my mother was, was overwhelmed by emotion, I knew something was wrong because I have never seen my mother rattled. 
What my mother said to me is that as she was going to visit my Aunt Curl, she found my Aunt Curl unresponsive. She immediately called 911 and they came and, and they picked my aunt up. And while my mother was on the other end, all she could say is, I don't think she's going to make it. I don't think she's going to make it. I, I don't know what's going to happen. They rushed my aunt to the hospital. And she spent weeks on a ventilator. And I can tell you over that time, I was filled with uncertainty. I thank you to the prayer warriors at St. Luke because we added her to the prayer list because I do believe in the power of prayer. I do believe that prayer changes things and that there is no healer like Dr. Jesus. And we called upon the name of the Lord. But at night I was left with uncertainty. Some of you know what that's like. Some of you have got the phone call and you found out that a loved one was in the hospital and you didn't know what the outcome was going to be. Uncertainty is, is one of those things that can paralyze you because it can disrupt and disturb your life. Well, I will say that my Aunt Curl went home to be with the Lord. And this past Friday, we were in Kansas City for the homegoing celebration. And it was a wonderful celebration of life. But after the homegoing celebration, I decided to stay a couple of days uh, in Kansas City just to spend some time with my mother. And while I was spending time with my mother, my heart was encouraged. And the reason my heart was encouraged is, is because while I was at home with my mother, her phone just kept on ringing. And she would pick up the phone and, and there would be somebody on the other end who would just want to know how she was doing. She would receive text messages with, with people expressing their condolences. People were sending flowers. Visitors were stopping by the house. People were making dinner and buying dinner just because they wanted my mother to know that they cared. When I had to leave Kansas City and make my way back to Texas, I was comforted and I was confident that in the days, weeks, and months to come, though they would not be easy, I know that my mother will be all right. Why? Because she's not alone. That, 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 that's it. She's, she, she's not by herself. Yes, the reality is from the womb to the tomb, from the cradle to the grave, from the time you check in to the time you check out, life is hard. It, it's a struggle. But for all the struggles that you will face in life, the message that I want to say to you today is that together we can handle it. Amen, somebody. Together we we can handle it. And, and today, as a church, we are starting a series. And the series uh, that we are starting is simply entitled, Together We Can. Amen, somebody. I, I feel that in my spirit. Go ahead and put that in the chat box. Write that down so you can keep that close to you. Together We Can. During this series, we are going to look at uh, various relationships in the Bible and, and how those relationships can help us navigate the challenges that we face in life. Over the course of this series, we're going to look at personal relationships in the Bible. We're going to look at professional relationships in the Bible. We're going to take some time and look at the importance of having a church family. Amen. The importance of having a church family and being connected to a community of faith because there are many people now that believe they can make it without a church. But, but we're going to look at how important it is to be connected to a body of believers. Really what I want you to get in your, your spirit, St. Luke, really what I, what I want you to hold on, hold on to really just three words, together we can. I, I want you to hold on to those words. Together we can. What, 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 whatever comes your way, whatever, whatever challenges knock on your door, I want your response to be together we can handle it. 
See, you don't have to let uncertainty, you don't have to let the uncertainties of, of life cause you to live your life in fear because together we can handle whatever comes your way. See, if you are doing life by yourself, if, if you have that mindset that I don't need anybody else, I, I can do this by myself, I want you to know that you're already losing the battle. Saints of God, I want you to understand that you need help. Ah, oh, Jesus. I I, I want you to know with your anointed self. I, I want you to know with, with your strong, independent self. I want you to know that you need help. And you might be the type of person that says, I don't like to ask help from anybody. I'm just going to do it by myself. I want you to know this morning that you need some help. And that's okay. Take a deep breath and let it out. You need help, and that's okay. See, the fact that, that you need help, it, it does not mean that you are weak. The fact that, that you need help, it doesn't mean that you are somehow less smart. The fact that you need help doesn't mean that you are inadequate in some way. It doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. The fact that you need help simply means that you're human. I want to help somebody this morning. I want to help somebody who's been trying to push through the struggles and the trials of life. I want to help somebody that's been trying to handle everything by yourself. I want to help you this morning and let you know that it's okay to ask for help. I want to let you know that you need help. Why? Because you're human. And you can't do life by yourself. And if you are someone who is doing life by yourself, please know that you will never be the best version of yourself without the help of others. Yeah, you can do some things by yourself, but you will never be the best version. You will never be all that God has called you to be. You will never be the person that God created you to be without the help of others. You know, I'm excited because the Olympics, you know, they have begun. And I love to watch track and field. And though one of my favorite sisters who, who I'm falling in love with, shout out to Dallas, Texas. One of my favorite sisters I'm falling in love with, though she won't be able to run her signature race, I know she's gonna come back home with some medals. And as I think about the Olympics, I think about my time running track. And, and, and when I was running track, one of the things that I found out is that you don't run your best race by yourself. You, you run your best when there are others to push you. And in this thing called life, you can never be the best version of whom God called you to be and whom God created you to be by yourself. You need others. See, you were not designed to live in isolation. God did not create you to live alone. God did not shape and mold humanity to be by themselves. See, see being alone is, is it's just not natural. Being alone is, is much like a fish being out of water. Yeah, a, a fish can be out of water, but that fish will not survive because its natural habitat is water and when it is outside of its natural habitat it will not survive and, and, and humanity we have been created we have been designed we have been shaped and we have been formed to live in community we have been shaped and formed to be around other people and I know that people get on your nerves Oh, I know they do. I know that people rub you the wrong way. But what you have to understand is that outside of healthy relationships with other people, you cannot survive. 
Survival is a word that, 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 that we focused on a lot in this past year and a half, and, and the CDC has provided us with information on how we can survive and how we can, can maintain during COVID and as we face this pandemic. But the CDC, it, it gives so much more information than things related to the pandemic. And there's one thing that I want to highlight that the CDC sheds some light on. Reading the article published by the CDC, and, and, and the article was entitled, Loneliness and Social Isolation Are Linked to Serious Health Conditions. The same organization that's helping you stay smart and safe during this pandemic is the same organization that says that loneliness and social isolation are linked to listen to this serious health conditions. I, I, I want to read just a little bit uh, of the article that, that, that I looked at. The article says there is strong evidence that many adults, listen to this, age 50 and older, that many adults age 50 and older uh, who are socially isolated or lonely, they put their health at risk. Listen to the health risk associated with, with, with being isolated. The article says that recent studies found out that social isolation significantly increased a person's risk of premature death from all causes. A risk that may rival those of smoking, obes obesity, and physical activity. The CDC says that, that, that being socially isolated puts a person at greater risk for death than smoking, than obesity, and physical inactivity. And you think that you can make it by yourself. What you are doing when you isolate yourself is you are putting yourself at risk. The article goes on to say that social isolation was associated with about 50% of increased risk of dementia. Being lonely and being isolated might cause you to lose your mind. Poor social relationships characterized by social isolation or loneliness was associated with a 29% increased risk of heart disease and a 32% increased risk of stroke. Loneliness was associated with higher rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide. Loneliness among, uh, loneliness among heart failure patients was associated with a nearly four times increased risk of death. 68% increased risk of hospitalization and 57% increased risk of emergency department visits. Well, what is the CDC saying? The CDC is saying that if you are isolated and you are experiencing loneliness, that is not simply a social condition, but that is a condition that impacts your health and your well-being. I believe that's why the Lord led me to share in this series with you together we can because if you are isolated and you are by yourself you are putting yourself at risk see the CDC says that that when you socially isolate yourself that that when you are lonely it increases your health risk but the Bible says this it is not good we write in the text for man to be alone. The, the, the CDC has looked at the social science, but all you have to do as a believer is look to the word of God and you don't have to go past Genesis chapter two to find out what God has said to all of humanity about being isolated and living life by yourself. God said in his word that it is not good that you be alone. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, our text for the day, it, it is, it's really a shocking text. 
The statement that God made, it, it's a statement that, that really jars you. And, and, and as you are reading through the Bible, when you get to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it's almost like you hit a speed bump. And God is saying, slow down, you've got to listen to what I've just said. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it, it, it's shocking. And, and the reason it's so shocking is because it represents the first time in all of creation that God said that something was not good. It's the first time in all creation where God said that something is not good. Now, you know, when you read the Bible, starting in Genesis chapter 1, you, you read how, how God Created, And when you read the creation narrative, you find out that, that, that God began to speak. And when God spoke, things came into existence. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God created the, 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 the sun and, and God created the moon. God created seed bearing plants and God created trees. God created livestock and God created the creatures that move on the ground and the wild animals. God created the birds of the air and God created all the creatures of the sea and the constant refrain that is repeated time and time and time again. The constant refrain that you see in Genesis chapter one is the refrain and God saw that it was good after God created God made the pronouncement and it was good Genesis chapter one is characterized by the refrain of God creating and then God making the pronouncement that what God created was good but in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 when it comes to the creation of humanity, God said, it's not good for you to be alone. When it comes to humanity, God said, you cannot do this thing solo. You can't do this thing by yourself. God says, when it comes to humanity, it is not good for you to be alone. What am I saying to you, St. Luke? I'm saying to you that you were not created to be by yourself. And as much as you can't stand people, and as much as you get upset and frustrated when people don't do things the way that they should be done, which means they don't do things the way that you do them, you've got to get over yourself. Because you were not created to be alone. In fact, you were created in the image of God. You, you were created in God's image. And, and I want to lift for you just a couple of verses of scripture to, to help you better understand what it means to be created in God's image. It's Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, where God creates humanity. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, Then God said, listen to this, let us, us is not singular, us is plural. Us, it, 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 it points to relationship. It points to community. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, Then God said, let us make mankind in our, come on somebody, image, in our likeness. So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and over all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image and in the image of God, he created, watch this word, them. So God created them, male and female. He created them. Speaks to community it speaks to relationship and and, and really verse uh, 28 Genesis chapter 1 is a verse that if you miss it you will miss the blessings that God has in store for you listen to what verse 28 says verse 28 says that God blessed them my my 
God blessed the male and the female. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful. God said, make, make other people grow this sense of community. That is what I'm, I'm charging you to do. See, when you look at Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, and you consider that at that point in human history, everything was going well. At that point in human history, there were no issues. There were no problems. It was a time where the lion and the lamb could lay together. And, and the lamb didn't feel threatened. When you think about Genesis chapter 1, you, you realize in Genesis chapter two, 2 that sin didn't even exist yet. It was a world in which there was no sin. It was a world in which there was no sickness. It was a world in which there was no violence. And in the Garden of Eden, where all was well, God said, it's not good to be alone. When, when everything was just fine, when there were no issues, when no one had challenges to overcome, it was then that God said, it's not good to be alone. Now, 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 now if, if in the good times, you shouldn't be alone. If, if, if when there are no problems, there, there are no issues, you, you shouldn't be alone, then how in the world can you make it by yourself when life gets challenging? If in the good times, God said it's not good for you to be alone. How in the world can you make it in a world that is filled with sin? How can you make it in a world where you experience winter storms? How can you make it in a world where you have to, to face injustice? How can you make it in a world where you've got to deal with COVID-19 and now a Delta variant? If when things are all good, you still need relationship, then how in the world can you make it in a world that has been ravaged by sin? How can you make it when the challenges of life come knocking at your door and the reality is it is not good because you were not built to be alone? You may not want to hear it, but you've got to hear it. You need people in your life. You cannot do it by yourself. You need some people in your life. And if you could count the, the number of associates and if you could count the number of friends that you have on one hand, if all you have to look to are the people that you grew up with, it's time that you step out and understand that it's not good for you to be alone. And we're going to take some time in this series to, to look at how relationships professionally can, can help you make it through difficult seasons. We're going to look at how relationships that, that, that are personal and, and even within your family can help you make it through difficult situations. We're going to help you see the beauty of having a praying church that can stand with you when times get difficult and times get hard. This thing that we call the Bible is not something that's supposed to sit on our, our, our coffee tables as decor. They're not apps that we download and never use but the word that God has given us is a word that will sustain our lives and the truth is we thank God for the CDC we thank God for the social sciences that help to open our eyes to how important it is to have social relationships but all we've got to do is look back to Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and understand that God said it's not good that you be by yourself. See, you, you need people in your life. 
I remember, I remember being at, at St. Paul uh, AME Church in Dallas, Texas. I remember that uh, we had a, a guest preacher to come and share with the people of God. And, and as is custom, when a, a guest preacher comes, they often bring their choir with them. And this preacher did just that. He brought his choir with him. And I told you, I, I tell you, that, that choir sure enough could sing. My, my. Oh, that choir, they, they didn't miss a note. They, 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 they were anointed. But I remember one song that they sang, and the way that they sang the song made me think, and it, it made me ponder song that they were singing is a song that I love by Hezekiah Walker. It's a song that simply says, I need you to survive. Yeah, you, you know the song. The song says, I, I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. And I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. And I need you to survive. That, that's the words to the song. But when the choir sang that song, they took out some words and they replaced them with God. So when they sang the song, they, they sang, I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you, but watch this. They said, I need God to survive. It's a subtle difference, but it's a major difference. They said, I pray for you, you pray for me, I love you. I need God to survive. And I remember when the preacher stood up, the preacher gave some commentary on why his choir sang the song in that way. And what the preacher said is the reason my choir sings the song that way is because while Hezekiah was close, he missed the mark just a little bit. And the preacher said that the way that Hezekiah Walker missed the mark is because he said, I need you to survive and not that I need God to survive. And the preacher wanted to make the distinction and, and he made the distinction as he shared that, that in life we don't need anything but God. And he didn't want to elevate humanity to a place where, where we couldn't survive with, without others. He, he wanted to make sure that he was clear that the only thing that we truly need in life is God. And while I understand where the preacher is coming from, I respectfully disagree. Yes, you, you need God. There's no doubt about it. You can't make it without God. But if you reflect upon Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, when God said to Adam, it's not good that you be alone you do realize that God was present. Woo! See, sometimes we can be too spiritual. Sometimes we can be so anointed that we know more than God, than God's self. God is the one that told Adam it was not good that Adam be alone. God told Adam that it was not good for Adam to be alone while God was present with Adam. And, and, and so, yes, it, it is true that you need God to survive, but God is the one who sets the parameters for relationships. God is the one that dictates what we need and what we don't need in our lives. And God is the one that set the standard for the relationships that we have in our lives. And God told Adam, Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. And what that means is that you need to be in relationship. 
You need people around you who can hold you up. You need people who you can lean on. And this morning, your breakthrough comes when you realize that you can't make it by yourself. This morning, your, your word of deliverance and your word of healing that you can't do it alone. St. Luke, I want you to know, as Hezekiah Walker has said so eloquently, I need you. You need me. I know I might get on your nerves sometimes, but I need you and and you need me. Because we're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. Thank you, Jesus. And if nobody else has told you, if you didn't hear it today, if you haven't heard it this week, if you haven't heard it in a while, you are important to me. And I need you to survive. My brothers, my sisters, whatever comes your way, whatever challenges you face, the days get dark and the nights get long. Together, we can make it. Together, we can make it. I want you to get that in your spirit. That you are not alone. And together, we can make it. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Eternal God, I am grateful. And I bless your name that not only can we call upon you in times of need, you surrounded us with family, surrounded us with friends, surrounded us with a church. The truth is, God, I need you. We need you. But we also need each other. And so, God, I'm asking now that you begin to repair broken relationships. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he tries to tear apart relationships. But, God, our declaration is built on your word that we should not be alone. And I pray, Lord God, that it would resonate within our spirits, that whatever comes our way, whatever the test, whatever the challenge, no, dif- no, no matter how difficult it might seem, it would resonate within our spirits that together we can make it. God, draw us together. Knit us together in love. Because as we move forward in uncertainty, not knowing what tomorrow will be, we trust that you have placed among us angels who can minister. Not the angels that have wings, but those whose hearts have been converted and turned towards you. And now from heart to heart and breast to breast, we share that love because together we can make it. God, we thank you and we praise you. In Christ's name, amen. Listen, before before we go, I want you to know that here at St. Luke, immediately following the worship experience, uh, we jump on a call called Round 2. And we discuss even further the word of God that was preached. But before we move to our round two, and I want to invite all of you to join as 
we dig into God's word a little bit deeper and as we do it together. Before I do that, I want to extend an invitation because there may be someone under the sound of my voice and you don't have right relationship with Jesus. Maybe someone under the sound of my voice and you are not connected to a church home. I need you. You need me. And I want to invite you to be a part of the St. Luke family. I want to invite you to a relationship with Jesus. Because relationships make the difference. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's as simple as ABC. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. Believe that God sent Jesus Christ to die for you. Believe that Jesus was crucified, dead, buried on the third day. He rose from the dead and then confess that he is Lord. ABC. Acknowledge, believe, confess. If you do that, you can have right relationship with Jesus. If you're doing that for the first time, I ask that you just in our chat box on any of our social media platforms, YouTube or Facebook, just say the word save and we'll follow up with you. If you want to get connected to St. Luke, if you're looking to be a part of this family, we would love to welcome you with open arms. You just put in that chat box connect. And on August 22nd, you can come meet us in person. Listen, God has been good. And I look forward to seeing you in round two. Receive the benediction of the Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, hence now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come on and hang out with me in round two. I'm jumping on right now, and I look forward to talking to you. And we can. Yes, we will. Together, we can make it. God bless you.